the blood phantom Peter Plagajowicz. Kisilova was a small, impoverished village that was indistinguishable from hundreds of other miserable villages surrounding it. Its inhabitants were simple Serbian farmers who lived in peace and contentment, accepting their poverty and perpetual misery. However, everything changed on the day when one of their own, named Peter Plagajowicz, passed away. The mere mention of his name spread horror and panic across the faces of those who heard it, freezing their blood in their veins. Dear Reader, I present to you the complete story of one of the oldest and most famous vampire tales, always remembering that we speak of facts far removed from myths and legends, facts that science sometimes struggles to provide a logical explanation for. The Vampire Execution Ritual, a blend of reality and imagination. The Austrian official, Fromblad, couldn't have imagined even in his wildest dreams that he would hear such a request. Although he had heard numerous superstitions and myths since his appointment at the government office in the Serbian province, this request was strange and terrifying in every sense of the word. He felt a sense of disgust and repulsion as he listened to the group of humble farmers standing before his office. They were a group of impoverished men, whose faces were marked by fear and terror, reflecting their misery and wretchedness. They informed him that the story began on the day when the farmer Peter Plagajowicz passed away. After his death, strange deaths started occurring in the village. Nine men died over the course of nine nights, their lifeless bodies discovered in their beds in the morning, strangled and drained of blood while they slept. Some of the farmers swore that they had seen Peter Plagajowicz's corpse roaming the village streets at night, and his wife had informed them that he came to her, asking for his shoes, after which she fled the village in fear and panic. Many other villagers also fled to neighboring villages, afraid of falling victim to Plagajowicz, whom they insisted had turned into a vampire after his death. Despite Fromblad's attempts to dissuade the farmers from digging up Plagajowicz's grave or waiting for approval from authorities in Belgrade, they pleaded with him to assist them as a witness, as the situation couldn't bear any delay. They feared that if approval from Belgrade was delayed, Plagajowicz would annihilate the entire village. They swore to him that a similar incident had occurred in a neighboring village 20 years ago during the Turkish occupation of Serbia, where all its inhabitants were killed by a vampire because they had delayed in exhuming his grave. Although he was dissatisfied with the farmers' intentions, Fromblad felt pity for them, considering their terror and wretchedness. He decided to accompany them in the district priest, who was sent as a representative of the church, to witness the process of exhuming Plagajowicz's grave. On a somber day in 1725, the two stood watching as the farmers dug up Peter Plagajowicz's grave and exposed his corpse. At this point, dear reader, perhaps it is best for me to leave you with the account written by Fromblad in his report, which he submitted to the Austrian authorities in Belgrade. Serbia was under Austrian rule at that time, regarding what he witnessed on that gloomy day. Since there are specific signs on the bodies of these people, whom the locals refer to as vampires, vampires, such as the lack of decomposition, the continued growth and renewal of the skin, hair, beard, and nails, the inhabitants unanimously decided to dig up Peter Plagajowicz's grave and examine his body to confirm the presence of these aforementioned signs. They came to me and recounted the events that had taken place in their village, requesting that both I and the parish pastor attend to witness the process of exhuming the grave. Although I did not encourage them to do so and inform them that they should wait for official approval and abide by its decision, they did not agree. They insisted on digging up the grave, and I was afraid that if I prevented them from doing so, they would abandon their homes and village. During the period it would take for approval to arrive from Belgrade, their village might be destroyed and ravaged by evil spirits and creatures, as they informed me had happened during the Turkish occupation. Since I couldn't persuade the villagers to refrain from digging up the grave, either through sweet talk or threats, I went to the village of Kisilova with the parish pastor. There, I witnessed the body of Peter Plagajowicz, which had already been exhumed. I noticed, with absolute honesty, that I couldn't detect even the slightest trace of the putrid smell usually associated with corpses. The body remained intact and hadn't decomposed yet, except for the nose, which had slightly shifted from its place. However, the hair, beard, and nails had grown, and the old skin had peeled off, revealing new skin. The face, head, 
and limbs were in good condition as if the deceased were still alive. To my astonishment, I saw fresh blood covering his mouth, confirming the villagers' claims that it was the blood of his victims. In short, all the signs attributed to vampires were evident on the body. After witnessing this, both the pastor and I became increasingly agitated. The villagers quickly brought a sharpened stake, ready to drive it through the dead man's heart. As the stake penetrated his heart, not only did a substantial amount of fresh blood burst from the corpse's mouth and ears, but also other terrifying signs, which I respectably refrained from mentioning, occurred. Following their rituals, the villagers proceeded to burn the body. This was the testimony of the official from Vlad, documented in the governmental records in Belgrade. He humbly requested forgiveness if he had erred in fulfilling his duty. However, it seems that no one paid attention or took notice of what Frumblad wrote. The report remained preserved in the government archives for decades until it fell into the hands of historians. Regardless of our belief in the veracity of his account regarding the body, this testimony remains the oldest documentation in Europe of the destruction of corpses believed to have turned into vampires. Bram Stoker drew inspiration from it for his famous novel, Dracula. In our time, According to a correspondent from a renowned Serbian newspaper who visited the village to investigate the incident, the villagers were unaware of which graves belonged to Plagajowicz. However, there is still a family in the village bearing that name, possibly descendants of Peter Plagajowicz. Stories of vampires continue to circulate in the village. One villager informed the journalist about a vampire currently present in the village, roaming in search of fresh blood. The journalist couldn't ascertain what the villagers had done about it or whether they still practiced the ritual of staking the dead.